Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches. And today it's kind of a little update video, but I will talk about some whips and the finished project. First, I just wanted to quick say that you can see my swelling is pretty much gone. There's a little, you can see this line, and a poof. Um, it's feeling much better. There's still a dull ache in that back area where the wisdom tooth was, but overall, it's okay. I don't. I can pop a couple Tylenol throughout the day and survive it. I'm just hoping I don't have to do that for too long because I don't like taking medicine. I mean, I'll take it. It doesn't bother me, but I don't. I just don't like being on medicine, if you know what I mean. So that's that. Hopefully, this in this two-week ordeal will be the end of the problems I've had in that corner of my mouth. Um, but since then, I had four days off. And then I worked for three days and now I'm back and in that time I finished another doll this one doesn't really have a name it's not a Tanya or a Maddie doll there here are her I actually sewed these buttons on so this time I sewed them to the end of the overall strap then I sewed the straps on her head as you can see is not floppy I do think that one of her arms looks a little longer than the other, and I don't know if it's because I sewed it tighter or like a fraction of an inch too low. Um, and there her hair. I did the way, the hair the way that the friendly fox talks about. I did not do any blush for the cheeks yet. Because I, I sure it looks cute, but I, I'm not 100% sure trusting myself to apply it properly. So... Oh, and there's her legs. So that's what this little girl looks like. I tied some bows in her hair. And then I've decided I'm going to sew them because the one I gave my niece, they were just here visiting for three days. Uh, the bows kept coming out, even as she touched it. So I think I'm going to take some thread and sew the bow together. And hopefully that helps. So I think um, I have a craft activity, a craft sale going on in October so even though it's far away if I make two or three items here or there by the time October comes around I won't have to rush so that is the friendly Molly doll from the friendly red fox but with yellow hair not brown um, another whip well here's my first whip I'm making another friendly Molly doll and this one I decided I would make with Karen Simply Soft because I have a lot of it. This one was made with, um, I love this yarn, Ivory. I love this yarn, soft purple. And then I use Karen Simply Soft yellow for the hair. And then this one is Karen Simply Soft's pink. And then I, what I did, kind of like I talked about in my Maddie doll, is on these rows here in the front loop. I would do a kind of a shell pattern and actually it's a similar shell pattern as the the monkey gal does for the never ending flower where I did a single chain single crochet see I said chain again I do a single crochet a triple cro or a half double crochet in one stitch the next stitch I did two double crochets and then the next stitch I would do a half double crochet a single crochet and then I'd slip stitch. So in the amount of four chains or four stitches, that is how I would do these little petals. And I want it to kind of look like a tutu. So I put three of them there. And then it came up here. And you do this row. And the So then, I should come back. After doing that row of shell, I come back around into that same row, but... This time in the back loop, I do the single crochet all the way around. Then I get to the next row. You know, I get back to my stitch marker, and in that row of single, I do a row of single crochet. Okay? Then, next row, I do the shell again in the front loop only, go all the way around. Then in that same row, in the back loop, I do a row of single crochets. So you're doing two rows, one in the front loop, one in the back loop. So that is how I did this, and then as you can see, there's a row in between each of the two two rows. 
So, and then I did yellow for the shirt. I've got about half of her head. Now, the one thing I'll notice, I'll tell you, is this is Karen Simply Soft. This is Karen Simply Soft. But this is still Hobby Lobby's. I love this yarn, Ivy. And the Karen Simply Soft stitches up smaller, which any of you crocheters that have been working for a while would know. Because Karen Simply Soft is not as, even though it's a worsted weight, it's a little on the thinner side. So she kind of looks like she has giant feet and a small body. And then her body even worked up smaller. I was kind of surprised by that. I feel like if I held her with, um, uh oh, my hook got caught in. I feel like her body is just a little smaller than this girl's body, and it's the same pattern. So my thing that I'm concerned about is I'm making her head, and her head <laughs> looks enormous. But you know, I guess Disney does that, right? With they, when they draw their characters, big heads, big eyes. It's supposed to make them look cuter. Um, and what I found that is working the best for me in sturdying their necks so as you can see, her neck is pretty sturdy. Looks like she's a little swollen on this side too, huh? Um, is I did have my husband cut on his table saw a pencil so that it extends to right here inside of her body to right here. And then I pushed it through my foam curler. <laughs> it was a little tight of a squish, but I think it's gonna hold it in place. And then I put it inside of her neck, and from here to here, up here on the top, you can see it in there. That is what's holding her head up. The ones where I've used the foam curler, the straw, the plastic tubing, um, I'm sure that's very similar to if I would find a dowel, but because I have three elementary students, we have millions of broken pencil in our home. So I'm just gonna use that until I run out. Um, so yeah, this is my current whip. Now I work on this while I'm usually off work, after work, when I have these four days off. This is what I do. I usually sit by my computer, watch some YouTubers, and I crochet. And I follow my pattern. And the reason I have to do it like that is because from here to here is like six rows. And then from here to here, like 13 rows. And then from here to here is and you know nine rows or whatever the number is and I tally in my pattern so as I do a row I remove the stitch marker I put a pattern I do another row remove the stitch marker make a tally and so that way I know how many rows I've done so that the legs line and the lines all line up so it's not a project that I personally can do while I'm waiting in the car to pick someone up or on my lunch break or you know at the doctor's office for me, I want to make sure all my rows are perfect, and maybe in the next video I'll show you what my pattern looks like. Because I've made like six of these dolls now, and I have like 13 little tallies there, and then another 13 here. And it's got all these tally marks all over the pattern. So while this is what I work on um, most of the time. So I've broken my one whip rule. My rule has always been one whip. I only work on one project at a time. Um, because otherwise I'll get bored of something or get overwhelmed or like something more and I'll pack something up and forget it. But I have broken that rule and I'm making another Adirondack wrap. So this is the one I'm making now. I don't know what colorway it is and I don't know where I stack. Oh wait here. It is all you mandala masters. This is wood nymph. So because I was going to make these for family members for Christmas, sister-in-laws and mother-in-laws and stepmothers, because we have, t my husband and I both come from divorced families, so we have, each have a mother and a stepmother. <laughs> um, so because I'm making these for everybody, I carry this around in my little naughty bag from the Finger Lakes. And this is what I take with me when I'm heading out for a quick, if I need a quick rocher. Like after this video, we're going to the skate park and my sons are going to scooter on the skate park before the big kids come, uh, i.e. the high schoolers or college boys, and because they don't get up this early. <laughs> the big kids don't. And mine have been up since 6 a.m. <laughs> so we're going to head over there and do some skating. And that is what I'll bring with me to the skate park. 
I cannot bring my friendly Molly doll to the skate park. And so that is, those are my projects. Friendly Molly doll, Adirondack wrap number three. Um, and that's like doll number six, six or seven. All right, so I have a very exciting thing. I live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, for any of you who have not caught on. <laughs> Our Walmart has mandala cakes. They've had the regular first run, like the Nymph, the Spirit, the Genie. And most of the time they sell them for $4.97. Every once in a while, um, they'll have them on an end cap for $1.98, which was at Christmas this past year, and I scooped up like 12 or 16 of them. I don't remember. And then I was there a couple months ago, and I bought the Genie to make my Adirondack wrap, and for some reason they rang up $3.98, even though they were on the regular spot in the yarn aisle uh, under $4.97. So I went there exactly one week ago, and they had some mandala cakes, but then they also had some baby cakes. And this one is called Mermaid's Cove. I love this. Now, besides the fact that my daughter is a mermaid, she believes mermaids are real. Since this, before this big mermaid trend popped up the last year or so, since she was two, she always thought she was a mermaid. She'd lay in the bath with her hair floating, and say, I'm a mermaid, or she'd wrap her legs up in a blanket and lay on the floor and be like, I'm a mermaid. So I got this, in fact, I got three of them to think about making her something. She wants an Adirondack wrap, and I don't know if I'll make her one of those or if I'll find something cuter or more unique to make. But the exciting news, friends, is when I went to price check them, they came up $2 each. So this is Mandala Baby, and it came up $2. So I was like, huh. So then I went back to the yarn aisle, and they had no more baby. They only had these three. You know what, I tell a lie. I feel like they had one more, but it was not my ideal colors. I thought about buying it and just saving it for a giveaway. But then I saw they had three of these, and I'm like, uh, I'll just get these three. I always try to pr practice restraint. Like if I want five, I'll get three. If I want 10, I'll get seven. So maybe I should have shot for a higher number. But <laughs> the other thing they had is they had the Mandela Sparkle. Um, they didn't have a lot. Uh, I wanna say I just saw like three or four there. But the Mandela Sparkle was ringing up, I wanna even say like 597, not the typical 497. Now I'm sure all you dear friends in Canada and Australia and England are like, that's still cheap. <laughs> But because I only work three days a week and I have three kids at home, I thought, I'm just going to get these $2 ones rather than getting one sparkle. So I essentially got three for the price of one. But I am kind of itching, so probably every time I go to Walmart, I'm going to keep my eyes out. And I go a couple of days a week. All of you folks with a lot of family know that you're always running to Walmart for something. And I'm going to keep an eye on the sparkle. And if I go there and there's only one left, I'm going to buy that one. Or if I go there and it seems to be 2 or three ninety eight, I might snatch one up then. Um, so yeah, that's my yarn purchase. And I'm kind of trying to figure out something special I can make for my daughter. I'm going to save it for Christmas. Because I, have t I tend to spoil my kids. And I think I'm going to make her something and save it for Christmas. Because I just made her a doll. Right? So the final thing I was going to share with you guys is because I've had a lot of people ask in multiple videos, where did I get the yarn bowl? So this yarn bowl I got for Christmas, but I do know where it came from. This was an Amazon purchase. The thing I like about this yarn bowl, and I know it's not a, um, I don't know where it came from. It just was an Amazon.com purchase is that this yarn bowl is heavy on the bottom. Um, a few poop people I know, poople, <laughs> a few people I know have yarn bowls, like a couple come to Knit Club, and then, like I said, my stepmom is a knitter, I've said that before. They seem to be a little lighter than this one, and this is a really strong, heavy knit bowl, I, or yarn bowl. I wish I should have weighed it for you to tell you. But if you're interested, I will say the, I think I've got from the Nick here, it's well loved. I use it all the time. I even jam my cakes in it like this. 
and I use it and I center pull. Or if, like when starting the Adirondack wrap, I want to always start with the same, so I dig into the cake if it doesn't already start there. Like you see these ones all start with the same, but if you're unlucky and you're doing the Adirondack wrap and it starts at a different spot, I would then color control. I would go to where I dig through the layers. <laughs> but I always pop even these when they're in the, you know, I always pop them like this and the center pull from wherever that mess is that I'm pulling from. And um, I use it all the time. I love it. Even when I'm making dolls and I'm switching one one little skein from another because it doesn't take too long before you change. Um, it is a great yarn bowl. And that's all I have to say about that. Amazon.com. I'm, I'm sure she typed in yarn bowl. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's got some real pretty wood colors in here. I've also seen people use like plastic bowls it. and things like that, but this is a nice heavy bowl. So that's it. That's 16 minutes of chatter. A finished object, my doll, two whips, my new yarn, and my yarn bowl. The other thing I thought maybe I'd mention is here is how do I decide what I'm going to do for my projects? Because I only do one project at a time. I have a journal, which I'm going to be honest, since working this summer, I've now lost. So now I have a scrap of paper that I carry in my yarn bag, which of course I left upstairs. But what I do is whenever I see something that I really like, I save it to my Facebook page. So I either like share it, I click on the top right and sometimes a lot of the articles will share it or I copy the link, save it to my Facebook page. And then I will pull out that journal or now that piece of paper <laughs> and I'll write down, you know, Friendly Molly doll from the Friendly Red Fox. Or I got this pattern from Hobby Lobby for a really adorable scarf that has beads on it. For And it was written specifically for the Sugar Wheels. So I have that on the list. And then I also have... Um, here, I'm going to pause this for a second. Heck, you know what? Let's just come in. My son just checked the mail and we have a big box. And I'm going to see whose it is because I was hoping it was yarn. <laughs> but it's too heavy. And I think this is my husband's purchase. This is Daddy's. So you're going to want to carry this up to yeah. Daddy. Wake him up. It's after 10. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I do. I just make a list. And then I carry it around in my yarn bag or in my journal. And anytime I see something or I watch a video, or because I'm going to tell you what, uh, who is it? The Canadian crotcheter is making all these super adorable dishcloths. And I'm like, oh, my God, I want to wake those. So I'm digging in my bag. I'm taking notes. <laughs> um, so that is what I do. I just keep a list and I just cross them off and move from one project to the other. However, there are times like this where I get caught up in something that I really enjoy, like the dolls and the Adirondack wraps. No. And just this summer, since I started work working probably in June, I'm on my third Adirondack wrap and on my sixth doll. So hopefully I'll kind of get off of this kick I don't know. And like start expanding, make some of those dishcloths, make that scarf from Hobby Lobby. There's also this really cute bag from this gal that also does YouTube videos. Not Bag O'Day, but I want to say she's from the Asian continent. And it's this cute, I think it's called a Celtic weave bag. So I wanted to make one of those. And which is why a while ago I bought these zippers. But I'm going to tell you. Poking into these zippers is not as easy as that gal made it look. Like, she just, she had a steel, and I have them too, and she just would poke it in, and it would go in right away. I'd give mine a firm poke, and it wasn't going in. So I'm like, do I need to pre-poke them? <laughs> ah. So I tried that one morning. It didn't work. I got frustrated. I'm like, I'm going to make another doll. <laughs> so I moved my bag project off to the side. All I had done was start poking a zipper. But that is it's something on my mind that I want to make, is this Celtic coin purse. It's only about this big, but it's super cute. The weave, the Celtic weave, that is on my list. So that's what I do. I make a list. I carry it around with me in a journal or my bag, and whenever I see anything, I add it. If there's a link to a pattern or somebody else make it on YouTube, I share it on my Facebook page. And then, you know, that's what I kind of run through. And if it's something I'm going to make for someone for Christmas, I usually put a G by it for 
gift. Mm. And then I'm then if I'm like running, ooh, I just kicked the camera, folks. Sorry about that. And then if I'm running out of time and Christmas is coming up, I look to see if I have any G's on my list. You know, I really should, being that it's 2018, be utilizing technology more. I have a tablet, a Kindle one. I don't even know if there's some kind of way to record electronically on there. I have a super awesome phone. I'm sure I could put notes in there and carry that. There's some of these gals at my knit club that are like old enough to be my mother or maybe even my aunt's <laughs> great aunt. And they've got all these pads and Kindles and electronic patterns. And I'm like, and here I am, still printing off my copy, highlighting and tallying on the side. Um, I need to get into the, the technology portion of it. Read a pattern from my phone and save a few trees. You know, that's what I need to do. But anyway, I think I'll wrap this up. It's 21 minutes. Um, I didn't give a shout out or anything to any of the other YouTubers. I think, I mean, I could still put a link in the description to these dolls. I've done that before. And if you want, I'll do that again. I can also put another link to the Adirondack wrap. I have quite a few videos where I chat about those. But I can still put a link into there because I did mention it. I guess maybe I'll also put a link um, for the Canadian crotcheter. She has a YouTube channel. She's from Canada. And she does call herself the crotcheter um, instead of crocheter, but she does crochet. And um, I'll add a link to her because I did mention her. And she does have videos. And then you can see those super cute dishcloths she's making. That is on my list, like four, four or five items down. So it might be a while before I make those. So if you want to know about them right now, head over to the Canadian crotcheter. All right, well, that's all I've got for today, folks. Um, thanks for watching, subscribing. Thanks for sharing my videos. Turn on that notification button and receive a notification every time that I post a video. Or don't. <laughs> I just, I don't turn on the notifications. I just look on my left side of my YouTube page and it has like a little gray number next to the ones I haven't watched. And that's how I choose the next video to watch. And that's all. So until then, happy crafting.